I'm going to start with uh, what Jesus said in Luke 6.38 because it ties straight in to what we're going to hit in 2 Corinthians 9. He said in verse uh, 38 of Luke 6, Jesus said, Give and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Give and it will be given you. Now, people take that out of context, health and wealth gospel, all that kind of thing. But remember, some people may abuse the passage, but Jesus actually said it. Give and it will be given to you. And the problem with health and wealth gospel is it gets it wrong on the purpose that God gives more back to you. Because it assumes God's going to give more back to you so you can keep it. And we see that same thing in 2 Corinthians 9. If you pick up in, let's see, what verse? Maybe about verse um, 6. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. You see how that connects with Jesus? Give and it will be given to you. So, you know, if you're, the, the plant, giving is planting. And so, sowing is planting, sowing sparingly. If you don't plant much, you're not going to harvest much. I mean, all farmers know that, right? But if you plant a lot, you'll harvest a lot. So, when you give, it will come back in many ways. So, the, the, that, even that, that phrase, largely a secular one, what goes around comes around, has a certain biblical Hmm. base to it. Again, the question is, why did God build that into into his universe? You know, why, why is it that way? Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. Now, I think this is very relieving here because we often think in terms of the compulsion, what we're commanded. Now, God does indeed command us to give. We'll not minimize that at all. But the Old Testament, and we'll see this, is full of free will offerings just as the New Testament is. It wasn't always mandatory. Yes, there was the mandatory giving, the tithing aspect of things but he's saying this special offering for the saints in jerusalem that he's talking about uh you know do do what you decide to do don't do it reluctantly or under compulsion for god loves a cheerful giver a happy giver he wants us to give happily and here's the thing we will not give happily unless we get it Unless we realize that we're passing on to others the grace of God, the pass it forward thing. Again, even in secular society, there's certain um, concepts that are biblical in nature that people get. You, you see this with, um, uh, with, with Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. How many of you have ever seen those um, PBS shows where Gates and Buffett two of the wealthiest people in the world are going on and on, and they just get, some of you seen them, they, they just get giddy about giving. And I remember Warren Buffett looking into the camera and saying, all those years I wondered why these billions of dollars were coming to me, and now I know it's so I can give it away. And his eyes are lighting up, and I go, these are not followers of Jesus But by God's common grace, they're getting something. They're understanding something. The joy of giving. And God doesn't just limit that to believers. He makes it available to unbelievers as well. But of all people, we don't just have the common grace of God. We have the special grace of God if we know Jesus. And 2 Corinthians 8, 9, that we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich yet for our sakes, he became poor, that we through his poverty might become rich. That should be so real and life-changing to us. So 
This should make us willing and even eager givers like those Macedonians who, who pleaded for the privilege of being able to give. That's what God wants. Now, the balance of that is God loves a cheerful giver. Does that mean you should wait until you feel cheerful about it to ever give? <laughs> well, here's the thing. Don't hold your breath. I mean, because it, <laughs> it's going to be a long wait. But once you start doing it, then it gets a grip on you. And you, once you see the joy in it, and I just want to encourage people maybe who have been giving for years. I talked to somebody last night who said this. You know, I, I've been giving for years, but I, I really don't feel a joy in it. And I would just encourage you, meditate on Scripture and connect this with what God is saying. We should, our heart should be full of thanksgiving and joy and gratitude and giving should be an expression of hearts that are so touched by the Holy Spirit of God, the lightning of God's grace has struck and the thunder of our giving comes out of that. So do what you can, if you haven't had a joy in giving, to mentally and before God say, God, pray, ask God, give me the joy that I'm supposed to have in giving. 